Welcome to the Financial Modeling for Renewable Energy M&A course. In this lesson, we will review why companies pursue mergers and acquisitions transactions. M&A transactions are part of the corporate development strategy and companies grow by means of mergers and acquisitions transactions. Companies like Microsoft, IBM, and Google all used M&A to fuel their growth, buying companies with very low to very high valuations. The graph on this slide shows the number and value of merger and acquisition transactions worldwide, and we can see that since 1985, both the number and value of mergers and acquisitions transactions worldwide have been increasing steadily. And it wouldn't be an overstatement to say that mergers and acquisitions is one of the main ways how companies grow today. We typically make a distinction between the strategic and financial buyers that participate in M&A transactions. Strategic buyers purchase other companies to improve their operations, either through cost reductions or revenue enhancement. Such benefits as cost savings or revenue enhancement are called synergies in M&A. Companies can buy a customer or a supplier to integrate vertically to reduce the cost of operations. Others integrate horizontally to access new markets in new geographies or new distribution channels. Typically, there is a significant tax or financial benefits that are shared between the buyer and the seller in the mergers and acquisition transactions. And we shall see later on in the course, the tax and financial benefits depend on the deal specifics and financing terms. Buyers who are interested in purchasing standalone companies, improving their operations, and then selling those companies within a set time horizon are called financial buyers. Financial buyers seek to maximize the return on investment, and these types of acquisitions are called leveraged buyouts or LBO. In a typical leveraged buyout transaction, investors purchase the target company and improve its operations as a standalone company. So they do not get the benefit of synergies that strategic buyers enjoy because we're not merging one company with another. The financial buyers focus on the undervalued, cash flow generating companies with suboptimal capital structures. They use significant leverage to finance the acquisition, and then they pay down the debt from the cash flow that the target generates. Therefore, it is important that the target has a strong cash flow generation profile. And since significant leverage is involved, it is important that the target has a significant and underutilized debt capacity. Financial buyers usually incentivize the target's existing or new management through performance-based payments to improve the operating efficiency of the company. And then they have a specified investment holding horizon, usually three to five years. And at the end of the holding period, they aim to sell the target to other strategic or financial acquirers or exit the investment by listing the target on the stock exchange through the initial public offerings. We have already reviewed the main reason why companies pursue mergers and acquisitions transactions, because it is one way companies can grow. Let's now take a more granular look at the main reasons why companies engage in mergers and acquisitions transactions. One of the main reasons is gaining market share. Companies want to sell their product to new customers in new geographies, or they want to sell their products in the same geography but to new customers. And this is called cross-selling. Companies may also want new distribution channels that the target may possess to access new markets. Another major reason for acquiring a company is consolidation, and this is relevant for utility companies and renewable energy companies. Consolidation usually results in economy of scale and overhead reduction. When we buy another company and we merge operations, we can reduce the fixed costs such as R&D or SG&A costs on per unit of production basis. When companies merge, they become a bigger entity, and therefore they may get bargaining power when dealing with suppliers, which may decrease the cost of supplies. Sometimes, the motive behind the strategic buyer's involvement in the merger and acquisition transactions is when they see that the target company is in distress, and therefore the asset is undervalued, so the buyer pursues the deal to take advantage of the distressed situation. And finally, another main reason for companies to pursue merger and acquisition transactions is competition. Companies want to acquire new technology or new employees in order to become stronger and defend against the competition. Often people ask the question whether a particular transaction is a merger or an acquisition. And the answer depends on the details of the transaction. There is no clear distinction between the merger and acquisition. Usually, a transaction is called acquisition when a larger company buys the stock or an asset of a smaller company. The transaction is called a merger when two companies merge and create a new entity. Sometimes, the M&A transaction is a blend of both mergers and acquisitions. 
A bigger company may purchase all of the stocks of a smaller company, essentially buying the company, and then renaming itself with the target's name. In the end, the key is how the transaction is presented to the stakeholders, whether the deal is a friendly deal or it is a hostile takeover, 